This time on Monkey Life. The team stand by to welcome a very special new arrival. From Louisville, Kentucky, the last female woolly monkey in America, and she's here. Baby Sylvester finally meets his new surrogate mum, Oshin. Hey, no, 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 no. And mayhem at the bachelors when the boys show off their ball skills. Monkey World in Dorset is one of the largest sanctuaries of its kind on the planet. For 25 years, the team have been rescuing and rehabilitating abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Shall I take him? Yes. If you'll stay with me. The park is led by Dr. Alison Cronin and is home to more than 240 monkeys and apes. The centre has developed a worldwide reputation for its success in breeding woolly monkeys. There are now 16 of these primates at Monkey World, living in three separate groups. One of them is headed up by Bueno. He's a very popular leader who's been at the park since 2005. The dominant female in his group is Yurima, who recently gave birth to Bueno's son, Enzo. Young Paolo is also in this group. He follows Bueno around like a shadow, keen to learn from the boss. But today, these woolies are going to be joined by another, who's coming all the way from America as part of an international breeding program. It's an exciting day for the primate care staff as they prepare the house for the new arrival, who's traveling 4,000 miles from Louisville Zoo in Kentucky. They want to make her feel as welcome as possible when she arrives in Dorset. We're just waiting for them to roll up right now, but we've got Sarah finally arriving. She's had a bit of a long journey from America, from Louisville, Kentucky, the last female woolly monkey in America, and she's here. So, um, yeah, finally. Woolly monkeys are critically endangered, and the only male woolly monkeys in North America at the moment are Sarah's dad and brother. So the breeding program decided Monkey World would be the best option for her. Yeah, and the trooper. <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Nice Sylvia, who has cared for Sarah since she was born, has traveled with her. The team want to get Sarah settled quickly as woolly monkeys are prone to stress. Okay, here we are. Everybody's very anxious right now, as you can hear by her calls. The bird chirping, like, <coughs> is an alarm call. So um, we just want to get her into the bedrooms and let her settle down for the night. And tomorrow, then she can meet everybody. Sarah is joining Bueno's group because it's still fairly small. Being unrelated to any of the other monkeys makes her very important for breeding. Sylvia stays with Sarah so she can see a familiar face. Next door, Bueno's gang can sense something's going on. We've moved um, Bueno's group of woolly monkeys back in next to Sarah. She can't see them, but she can hear them and she knows they're there. She doesn't seem too concerned at the moment. I think she's having quite a big day. There's lots of noise, lots of new things. So maybe once we all go home and leave her in peace, she might suddenly realize there's new and interesting neighbors. But for now, she, she seems quite calm. Despite her long journey, Sarah hasn't lost her appetite. She's well and truly helped herself to dinner. She's had bananas, grapes, all sorts. She's had a bit of a scratch with some of the keepers, which apparently she, she really enjoys. So I think she's relaxing a bit. And uh, she can't think we're too scary or she wouldn't be helping herself quite so enthusiastically. <laughs> she's actually waiting now that I'm talking sorry. There we go. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry is that about that. Oh, and a little trill. That's a, oh, that's a very happy woolly monkey noise, so things are going okay. Once Sarah has got over her jet lag, it'll be time for her to meet her new family.
There are four groups of chimps at the park. Paddy's has been established the longest. Then there's the chimp nursery led by Sally. Hananya heads up a group of 19 chimps. And finally, there's an all-male group known as the Bachelors, which is led by Butch. The staff are constantly looking for ways to keep the primates busy. And today, it's the boys' turn. Today we're doing a really special enrichment day for the Bachelor boys. Uh, we've got tons of really big boxes, which I think they're going to love. The boys don't have a great attention span, so the staff have to work extra hard when thinking up ideas for them. We're just going to pack all the boxes with wood wool and then put some scatter in, so maybe some sunflower seeds, um, monkey nuts, dates, things like that. So it'll just mean that they'll spend quite a lot of time going through it looking for the bits of wood we've put in. We've also got some footballs which we're going to put in as well, so it's a really big enrichment day. They've probably never had this many boxes at one time, so I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with them. Jester is first in, closely followed by leader Butch. They're surprisingly quiet until they discover the boxes. <laughs> Sammy is so excited, he starts displaying, as does Paco. So the display just acts as a warning and the reminder to the rest of the group just who's in charge. They want to make as much noise as possible. They also want to look as big as possible. Their hair puffs up and stood on end, their arms and legs splayed. And they'll often use props, so in the wild generally they'd use branches. Obviously they don't have them here, so the boxes make ideal props during their displays. Once the boys discover the food, they calm down. Mojo, who gets on well with everyone, tucks in. But Charlie has discovered the footballs and begins to show off his skills. Kiko demonstrates a back pass. While Jester gets one in off the post. Usually when we give them footballs, um, they'll just pop them within the first few minutes and that's the fun over, but they actually kept them. Paquito has a go at dribbling, but then focuses on his ball control. As half-time approaches, there's a lot of tackling going on. When Charlie and Gypsy get into a scuffle, Jimmy has to act as referee. But then, Gypsy picks a fight with Kiko instead. He's heading for a red card. At full time, with all the food gone, the chimps put the wood wall to good use. We're going to leave the boxes in overnight because what they'll usually do is they'll use the boxes as part of their nests, so they'll tear them up and mix it with wood wool and can wrap it all around them and that'll be their nest for the night. Life is much quieter at the Simon Gibbon house, where Sam is getting used to life on his own. The veterinary team recently had to put his son Onion to sleep because they found a massive inoperable tumour in his gut. This looks bad, Alison. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm very sorry. Sam also lost his partner Sage a couple of years ago. Today we've decided to let Sam outside. Um, it's been a couple of days since we had to make the difficult decision to put his son Onion down. Clearly he would choose to be with his mate and have companionship, that, especially that that he knows. But I'm not convinced that he's actually totally devastated and upset and pining. And we just wanted to make sure that Sam was settled and didn't seem too distraught, too frantic or too upset before we let him outside into a you know 30 meter stand of trees. Today, staff are putting out a puzzle feeder to keep him occupied. Basically what we're aiming to do is actually to get him off the ground and up, onto the, up into the trees, kind of replicating the natural behaviour that he would exhibit in the wild, foraging for his food. Sam spots it immediately.
It doesn't take him long to work out how to get to the treats. Gibbons have long arms that they use to swing through the tops of the trees, and they prove very useful to get at the hard-to-reach pieces of fruit. Siaman gibbons come from Malaysia, Thailand and Sumatra. They're endangered partly due to the illegal pet trade, but also because their habitat is being destroyed, mainly by the palm oil industry, which is clearing large swathes of forests. In the wild, they live in pairs with their offspring. Male and female Siamangs have different songs, which they sing together as a duet. Sam and Onion used to sing together at the park, but now Sam has to sing on his own. Alison is trying to find him a new mate and is feeling positive. He's gone brilliantly and I'm really pleased Sam's looking okay and he's back out in the one secure and regular thing that we can give him, which is his home and his lovely stand of trees. Bueno's Woolly Monkey House, new girl Sarah seems to have recovered after her long journey from America. And the team have decided it's time for her to meet the others. In a minute, we're going to be introducing Bueno and Yurima and Enzo and Paolo into the mix. And hopefully everybody will get on very well. They're all a really nice bunch of monkeys, very easy going. So hopefully they'll all accept each other, spend the day getting to know each other. And then when we're happy that they're comfortable, we'll let them try out their outside enclosure together. Just uh, as we left last night, Yurima was making really loud, really affectionate calls to Sarah and she was replying. So things are looking really positive and we've just got to keep our fingers crossed that when they actually meet face to face, things will carry on that way. In the wild, it's normal for girls to leave their families and join other groups. This is nature's way of preventing inbreeding. So Bueno's gang shouldn't find it too unsettling to have a new female member. It's not long before Bueno, Yurima, Enzo and Paolo emerge to meet the newcomer. So far today it's gone fantastically, we couldn't have really asked for more. Bueno has been amazing, he's been teeth chattering again so he's very, very interested in her. Good girl, Yurima. Yurima snuffled Sarah. Sarah I don't think was quite sure what to make of it. Um, but she was very diplomatic and just kept her eyes turned away and wasn't being confrontational at all. Paolo, bless him, is in his own little world. He was so excited by everything. He did a wall of death around the playroom for several minutes, but now he's calmed down. Um, I think he's quite comfortable with her being in the group. He just hasn't quite plucked up the courage to actually have much of an interaction with her yet. From here, hopefully, the guys have sorted themselves out. Um, they're all in together. We haven't given them outside access yet because we need to be happy that Sarah's comfortable enough that she knows to come back into the house if she's cold or frightened or it's the end of the day. Um, so hopefully that will be for us tomorrow to do. Um, but for today, we're just going to let them get used to each other, have some nice snacks, generally have a nice relax, and we're hoping to leave them together overnight. At the Orang Nursery, another recent arrival is settling in well. Baby Sylvester was rehomed from a zoo in Spain because his mother refused to feed him. Under a European breeding program, Monkey World looks after all orphaned orangs. Sylvester's just doing fantastic. He's everything we could have hoped for in a baby orangutan. Sounds a bit funny, but he is simply brilliant. Really confident, just strolls up to everybody and puts his hand out to say hello. And today's the big one. Today we're gonna um, open the door between him and Oshin, with Jeremy, of course, involved. Fingers crossed, we'll see how we go. Oshin arrived at the park in 2010 from South Africa, where she'd been kept as a pet. Staff are hoping she'll act as a surrogate mum to Sylvester, but as she spent most of her life living with humans, she won't have come across a baby orang before, so the meeting could go either way. Oshin is very fond of animal director Jeremy and may not like the idea of sharing him with the newcomer. 
them, gorgeous. It's taking place in the safety of the bedrooms, as it's a more controllable area. Says, Let me get to these toys. Hello. Where are we going? All oh, right, we're going. So we're just going back over here, apparently. Ooh. What are we going to do now? Where's your toys? You got any toys to play with or anything? Who's that? Who's that? As always, Sylvester is the one to hold out a hand of friendship. Hello. 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 Hmm. Good girl. There you go. You're not quite sure, are you, Puppet? Who's that? Go on, just say hi to him. Go on, give some. For the first time in your life, give something. How about that? If you give, you can reap what you sow and you can get more back. Apparently. It's never happened to me yet, but. <laughs> Hello. Oshin can't seem to make up her mind about the little orang. I don't think she's got any issues. She's just confused, I think. I don't think she can see any point in him. But, uh, you know, maybe that will wear up. Hey, no, 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 no. Oh, OK, OK. Still a very little boy, so he's got loads of time. You know, we have regular visits which can just familiarise everybody, and then there's... If it becomes just part of the routine, it's not a... It's not such a big deal. The whole introduction is a long process, so if we just have a natural evolution of a friendship rather than thrown in at the deep end, and because he's so human-dependent still, he still needs his bottle 6.30 in the morning and 10 o'clock at night, which clearly, the best will in the world, these guys can't do, then we're just going to have to work together. You know, it's a bit of teamwork going on here. Teamwork? <laughs> yeah? There's no I in team. While Oshin is getting to know Sylvester, over at the Capuchins, the boys are about to be given their favourite treat. In the wild, capuchin monkeys forage for a variety of foods, but here they're particularly partial to mealworms, which are specially bred to feed captive wild animals. We do give them a lot of fruit and veg, and that makes up the majority of their diet, um, along with insect feeds as well, which are very important. Um, in the wild, they do spend a lot of time foraging for insects. Um, and there's also a protein portion in their diet, um, which is also because they are omnivores, so they do eat a wide range of different things, including um, some mammal and bird species as well. Capuchins are really good with their hands, very good at finding things with them. Um, they're very dexterous. Being live food, the worms will hopefully crawl around a lot more and get into the crevices, and this will make it a little bit more difficult for them to find the food. Hi, Tao. One capuchin has been separated from the rest to make sure he gets his fair share. Boy. Tao was recently rescued from Slovenia, where he'd been kept as a pet. When he arrived, he was underweight and undernourished, so the staff have been feeding him up with insects packed full of protein. These are giant mealworms, um, and he absolutely loves them, which is handy. We generally try and give him probably a good 10 or so a day. Do you want another one? Oh, good boy. Can you try something else? Oh, good boy. That's nice, isn't it? The staff are trying other foods to bulk him up too. No. Today, it's rice pudding. <laughs> Tao's not tempted. He'll drop everything and come over for a giant mealworm or a locust. Um, but his other favourite foods are the, the vegetables and the fruit, um, which is obviously good from a diet point of view. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if he's just chewing on some celery or some lettuce all day, he's, he's not really going to pile on the pounds. So um, that's why the intensive feeding of the extras is really important. Staff are monitoring Tao's weight. When he arrived, he was just two and a half kilos. Jenny's hoping to notice a difference. But persuading a capuchin to sit on a set of scales is challenging. Tally! Come on, Tal. Tal, there's some more here. Come on. Jenny's trying to bribe him with some of his favourite snacks. We've got loads of these, don't run away. Oh, good boy. Oh, tails off. 
is quite good at coming over, but he doesn't always stay on the scales for very long, so it can be quite um, tricky at this stage to get um, a really accurate weight on him. Also, it's not only the bulk of his body that needs to be on, but quite often the tail will be hanging off the scales, so I've got to try and position him so everything's on there, because every bit of tail counts at the moment. <laughs> That's better, your tail's off. I'm very happy, three and a half kgs is sort of a, a nice milestone that we've been trying to achieve for the last sort of couple of weeks, so that's really good. You never know, he might, no, he's gone again. <laughs> Next time on Monkey Life. An anxious time for the team when O'Sheen undergoes a health check. They come round, or they apparently seem to come round, and then they crash. It's not a 100% safe period. And news of a new mate for Sam. It's a female who's 18, 19 years old, so a similar age to Sam, and she's currently living at Dublin Zoo. <laughs>